Now, there's many conversations we can have derivative of this, but one of the most foundational ones for you concerning your happiness is that the 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 the, the psychologists and the 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 modern idea ideolo, um, ideologues, be they religious or political or psychological, whatever, like the book cucks, you know the the types, the book cucks. Anybody who comes at you with a book, you just gotta shut that door on them. Just be like, I don't want, I don't want no books. Get away from me with your books. I am done with books. I I no longer need books. Book cuck is is over it is done i'm out of here i am anti-book this is an anti-book ideology right here what happens is that if you want to get the true correct mindset towards all of this stuff the 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 correct way for the west to go forward with its religious spiritual practices it's it's practices of well-being if you so wish is to go towards a psychology of biological methods So Buddhism holds at its center a biological method. Buddhism holds this idea of breeding practice which tames and controls the mind. Okay, now our Western ways of approaching things, we're we're hugely absent from these. We're very intellectual people, very noggonist people. But this is wrong, okay? The biological methods need to become foundational. The body needs to become the absolute epicenter for this the mind needs to be understood as a derivative entity not a a bad entity but just a derivative entity from this body and therefore things like nutrition and food the ability to express the body release instincts and and understand instincts and study the passions the ability to manifest creativity out of the body the ability to to serve the body and develop um, physical and muscular excellence out of the body a very greco um, perspective the way that the greeks used to see the develop development of a person as of of course, like, you know, the schools in Greece had um, had wrestling practice uh, alongside intellectual practice, alongside, for example, musical and dramatic practice, uh, alongside artistic practices. This is a very complex and complete and embodied and holistic way of approaching things, foundationally correct. And the whole approach going forward needs to be premised upon this. The vast majority of our intellectual problems stem from a failure to do these psychological due diligence, this biological due diligence that's going on. Now, When you begin to understand this, you begin to see very clearly how you can save yourself. The way you save yourself is through a holistic approach towards the body. You need to, as I say, get your nutrition in order. You need to begin to challenge and evolve and develop the competence and power of your body. You need to get muscle. You need to get stronger and healthier. You need to get struggle. You need to make your body grow. You need to give your body a felt lived experience. You need to then learn how to discipline that intellect of yours and get it out of the way. You need to learn to breathe properly. You need to learn how to um, understand the body's need for social relations and how for example touching people is important now i don't want you to be a fucking perv running around in shops like slapping people's asses and all this type of stuff but you need to understand the 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 principles of this stuff that to to have a healthy mind needs to have a complex lived and embodied experience it needs to have this fulfilled perspective if you will but many of these first principles all of these these things you think you know something about these you're completely wrong these are huge areas of education that have been massive massively massively failed the the noggins have massively failed us in these and you're going to have to turn them into center points of study if you want to fix yourself if you want to manifest excellence out of yourself you need to go to this place the body is the center it must begin there and it has to be obsessive it has to be huge it has to be a big deal because this is like the shadow of your culture this is the real big deal one of the biggest deals of all now, when you read Nietzsche, you notice that he is constantly bashing the West, saying that the West is shit. The West is going to make some absolutely horrific mistakes in the next uh, century or so. And that many of his, his damning critiques turn out correct. He says that we'll all turn into last men, fat consumers with no higher vision or higher purpose, no ability to intellectualize because we have no discipline over intellectualize, intellect, intellects, but we're massively arrogant, massively noggenized, massively intellectual. Nonetheless, we rationalize, but don't actually use the intellect with any type of skill and this pain will start to evoke within the western world despite the fact that we'll all talk about equality and fairness and ending suffering the pain the suffering of life will magnify into a, a level of profoundness that will be disgusting and horrific and it won't be even a dignified suffering it'll be the suffering of being fat the suffering of being indulgent and hedonistic the most pathetic form of suffering a suffering that you can't pity people for at all and that will become predominant and world ruling and that is precisely what 
what happened because he was correct and because you are wrong and he is right and I am right because I listen to him I don't even think for myself I don't even need an intellect I'm just like I plug in the German incel I'm like just download what you think and I shall repeat upon internet Nietzsche Nietzsche has possessed me people please help I'm shaking the laptop please help please set me free because he, he suggests, he has told me, he spoke to me through his magic books. I don't read books, actually, no. Sorry, pretend I didn't say that. Scratch that one. Um, the pain within the Western soul co- is, comes from this failure, comes from this lack of intelligence. And all your, like, and this is, this is so, it's so damning when he says it. All your intellectuals, all your noggonists, the vast majority of people you listen to, they're wrong. They're useless. They're misleading you. Most of the books you, re- you read, pointless. Most of these people who are bringing this stuff up, wrong. Because just look at the world around you. You've, you've had these 300 years of profound intellectualism and, and the most literate society in the world and it's let, left us with a consumerist last men. It's left us with a, a, a race of people who are de, like decrepit and disgusting. No, we're, we're destroying ourselves. We're, we're degrading. We're, we're, it's, it's, it's horrible. It's a decaying people, you know? It like feels like the end of Rome. And this is just foundationally what's going on. And so there, there, there has to be a sort of pause at some point. Where's the humility from the intellectuals? Where are the noggonists kind of calming down and saying they don't know what they're doing? Why do these people have... This is sort of Nietzsche's big deal. This is why he's so mean. Why are we giving these people the wheel and saying, oh, you, you just lead? Because they moralize, because they wag the finger, because they, they, they rationalize more loudly than everyone else. Just because you rationalize a lot doesn't mean you're right. Actually, in this whole scheme of looking at things, it means you're probably wrong on foundational principle and whatnot. This is the state of the game. And this is actually kind of scary because what happens is all this pain, all these mistakes, all this disembodied um, nonsense, what it leads to is it leads to a sort of intellectual elite, a Brahmin caste rising above of society, these sort of people you see who write the books, Enlightenment Now, all this type of stuff, and and these people who who you know are suffering from the same problem of us. They're noggonists. They're stuck in their head. They're disembodied, and they suffer. Of course, they suffer. And so what they start to do is they start to try come up with a way that they can escape sc- suffering, as we all do. They talk is how they're trying to save all of us and feed the world and all this type of stuff. And they're promising. This is the, this is their core religious promise. They're promising. You know what we're gonna do. We're going to make a techno utopia. And even though I know you're, you're cooked over your laptop, writing like a bug, having that bad posture and you feel bad, we are going to make a techno utopia. This is why you're doing it. There's going to be this techno utopia and the singularity. And you can upload your consciousness out of your body into the reality. This is the promise. We're going to escape the, the thing that's causing all this pain. So there's this accusation towards the body. The body is the source of pain. The embodied experience, that's where the pain is coming from. The body is evil. And we are going to escape this. And what we are is we are the jargonizing, rationalizing, talking brain. We are the Twitter avatar within your mind that has opinions. We're the opinion haver inside of our head. And what I'm going to do with you is I'm going to lift that opinion having brain and consciousness out of you. Not the real consciousness, the left hemispheric consciousness, what the Buddha is called the barking dog, the monkey mind, the actual delusional consciousness, the narrow focus. That's the sacred thing. And we're going to lift it out of that body of yours and place it into a machine. And all, everybody else is going to go up in there and it's going to be like cyber Reddit. It's going to be the kingdom of Reddit. It's <laughs> It's going to be absolute hell on earth, I'm sure, but it, it seems like it'll be this beautiful thing. Well, there'll be no distinctions, no separation between me and you, no body to get in the way, no, none of that awkwardness of the body. It'll just be pure, rationalized bullshit, just pure jargon. We'll just be this 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 mob of cloud jargonized, this hive of jargonism just going on there, completely disembodied. And the, the thesis, the feeling underneath all this is that that will be salvation. And it's got this religious fervor to it. I've spoken to people who firmly believe this is going to happen and they firmly believe that this is how they're going to get saved and these are people who really really struggle with the body and of course this is incorrect this is philosophically on its first principle incorrect Nietzsche pointed it out flawlessly at the very very start it's very very funny watching it all play out it's almost like a parody you know it's quite strange and of course what comes along with this is that sort of brave new world attitude. Basically, while we charge toward this singularity, what we need to do, these, these incompetent, noggonist intellectuals, while we charge toward this singularity, what we need to do is we need to take as much pain out of people's lives as possible because there's so much pain in people's lives. And of course, they don't know how to do that because they're wrong philosophically. And so what they do, and Nietzsche is evil in their mind, so what they do is that they feed everybody with porn, with drugs, with ex- excitement, media, Netflix, 
automation for to reduce work and all this stuff this is the brave new world attitude you know it's like all right we we placate everyone so there's no more suffering and pain and then everybody can sort of get along and then we can lift our consciousnesses finally up into the singularity and all be saved all have this universal salvation all have this kingdom of heaven this neo-christianity this new um, intellectual abstract noggin movement it, this history i'm a marxist now history is the struggle between the the boyos and the nogginists that's fundamentally what's going on and there will come a day when the boyos will overthrow the nogginists that's what's going to happen and then we'll have the boyo utopia of pure there'll just be literally be no books the first thing we'll do when we gain power is we'll just like burn we'll burn a lot of books bro it will just be book burning like it'll be like halloween night man of books it'll be fucking nuts you will be like how i didn't even know you could burn that many books like the the, the whole global warming thing like we'll fuck everything up because we'll burn so many books there'll just be black clouds around this planet for a hundred years and that will be the manifest station of our our shame that will be the manifestation of of our self-imposed punishment and whatnot